we hear a lot around about building construction figures, uh, about home investment, all of those sorts of things. But ultimately, when you talk about any of this construction, none of it does itself automatically. You've got to have people on the ground who are there day in, day out, working on these sites, making it all happen. And there are concerns now, a shortage of bricklayers could lead to construction delays and push up costs. The building industry desperately trying to find people who are ready to go. I thought we'd find out some more about all of this today because this is literally uh, the bricks and mortar stuff that we are dealing with here. Jeff Noble is the Chief Executive Officer of the Australian Brick and Block Laying Training Foundation and he's on the line. Mr Noble, good morning. Good morning, Stuart. Thank you for your time. How severe is this shortage of, of bricklaying apprentices? Oh, it's, it's, it's quite severe. Uh, we're quite concerned that uh, there's a lack of apprentices uh, coming into the trade and housing starts are on the increase. There's a recovery in most states and uh, we're going to find that uh, there won't be the skills to uh, to build the houses we need. So there's, there's a real concern about the, the future. I saw some of the there. figures, the, the Housing Industry Association predicting home building will rise 10% this financial year. It's the highest in a decade. So clearly what is an already stretched workforce is set to be possibly stretched beyond breaking point. Yes, and I think that the last time we're at these uh, levels of construction, uh, we had more apprentice numbers coming through, but it's, it has fallen away. Apprentice numbers across the country has dropped by a third. Uh, in the last few years, and uh, we're just finding it difficult to attract uh, good quality young people into the trade. What do you see as some of the key reasons for that? I think partially it's, it's a generational thing. I think there's a push for university. I think people see this as a as a physical job uh, yeah. and really appreciate the skills or the status of trade. And, and I think most parents uh, often, uh, you know, they whether kids are good with their hands or not, they say, no, you've got to have a degree, and that's just seemed to be the... the the base education level that people aim for. It's an interesting thing, this, isn't it? We've almost been conditioned into this idea that uh, if you're not going to university, you're somehow missing out when we know a lot of very well-prepared and equipped tradespeople can do very, very well. Many of the small business people to whom we speak are in those sorts of professions we're talking about here. When you consider all of that, is it difficult maybe getting into the heads of the parents and some of the kids themselves that perhaps university isn't for everybody despite what some of the parents might think? Yes, we spend a lot of time uh, promoting the career prospects uh, because bricklaying is something we don't expect people to do it uh, for 20, 25 years uh, and this younger generation want a, a range of jobs through their lifetime and yes. this actually does lead to builders, uh, construction managers, project managers. So there's there's plenty of opportunity within the industry itself, starting with a trade. And I think uh, most people think that uh, builders uh, came from a carpentry apprenticeship and that's not necessarily the case because bricklayers with a qualification can go on to become uh, very very good quality builders. Right. Also, too, we've seen in recent times a lot of big salaries in the mining sector, particularly as the construction phase ramped up. We're now starting to see that construction phase tapering off. Do you think that maybe that might free up some of the labour to come back to industries and uh, professions like uh, like bricklaying? Yes, we, we would hope so, uh, particularly in WA and in Queensland. Uh, there's a, quite a strong demand in WA. Um, it, I guess the difficulty is people looking at uh, apprentice pays, and this year they had been uh, increased uh, substantially, but it's still uh, a learning process, and a, an apprenticeship of three or four years is something that you're actually uh, um, studying for and, and honing your skills, so uh, the pay is not going to be uh, as a full tradesman would get. I think this is, uh, to some degree, a discourage, discouraging factor of people coming into the trade. What sort of attrition rate is there amongst a budding apprentices who get into bricklaying, Jeff? We would see about 50% not making it through to a right. qualification. Right. And some of those do stay in the industry and they, they do continue to lay bricks. Uh, they might have the skills but not necessarily the knowledge, so they, they won't have a full qualification, uh, but they'll find that uh, they'll stay in and, and lay bricks as, as well as they can. We, we'd prefer them, obviously, to be fully qualified. Yes. Because the range skills and knowledge across the trade. And I suppose we shouldn't be surprised because we see, look, there's an attrition rate within university as well. Often I think about 30% of first-year university students drop out, so there'll always be an attrition rate. It's probably a lot higher than you'd like. Again, are there a number of factors? Do some people simply find that the work is too onerous for them, too labour-intensive for them? What are some of the reasons behind the attrition rate? There, there is a labour labouring factor. Um, it's a bit of a, a shock value to some degree, but we would sure. encourage people to, to try it beforehand. We do a lot of work in schools and uh, pre-entry training 
uh, we do careers expo. So we, we tell it how it is. So um, we try and uh, challenge that. Um, the, the other issue, uh, of course, is that uh, through the bricklaying, you're often, often working for one employer and it's a relationship thing. They're small gangs, they're small businesses. Yes. And if that relationship's not right, sometimes you can lose a very good apprentice who might not have a second go with somebody else. It is difficult, but uh, we certainly need them because, as I say, none of these things build themselves, do they? Exactly, exactly. And it's a great trade. You know, if you uh, drive down the street, uh, the things you'll see are the bricks and, and there's plenty of evidence of, and pride in uh, what young people have built uh, around the country. No, that's right. The opportunity to stand back and say, well, I had a part in that structure in front of me. Look, appreciate your time, Jeff. Interesting to, to chat and I appreciate it. Thank you.